there's huge pride in the NHS um, uh, and support for health services generally, with 77% uh, of people now saying that uh, Britain's National Health Service is one of the best in the world, which is the, the highest we've measured, and up from 50% uh, uh, just in, in the late 2000s, 2007. And in a recent international study that we did across uh, 20 countries, uh, Britain actually comes second top um, in terms of rating of current access to good quality health care, second only to Belgium, ahead of many other developed uh, countries. But the fear for the future is also clear in people's opinions. Um, so we've got the highest sense of severe uh, funding pressures that we've measured in the most recent surveys. 88% of people saying that the NHS will face severe funding problem in the future. People get uh, the funding gap increasingly get. We're also among the least optimistic about the future of health services. Uh, Britain down there, just 9% of people thinking it's going to improve. Now, you can see that we're not alone, in in particularly in developed countries, in thinking that they're going to have problems. We're not alone in facing these issues of rising health care costs. In contrast, as you'd expect, there's a, a very different, much less clear uh, picture of social care for the majority of the public. Massive issue, as we've heard, for those who need it, but much lower general experience of it. And, and it's not something that people think of in advance or particularly want to think of in advance. Six in ten say they no know nothing about it. And when we ask who's preparing, uh, only just over a quarter of people say that they're preparing financially uh, to even some extent uh, for paying for social care services when they're older very unlike health services, but quite like lots of other issues. We don't quite know whether we want to be Scandinavian or American in lots of ways. In terms of the recommendations, there's lots you could say about individual elements of them, but clearly the most prominent from a public opinion point of view is going to be how uh, the changes are, are paid for. Uh, the majority always say that the NHS should be given uh, more funding, so they're much more at that end of uh, this sort of scale, where the NHS should be given more funding to continue to provide the services in the same way it does at the moment, then the NHS should provide fewer services within uh, the budget that it has at the moment. If there was any um, service that you would think would actually encourage people to support tax, tax rises, general tax rises, it would be um, the NHS. But in fact, when you, when you ask a decent question on this, a more sensitive question on this, uh, you do only get around about a quarter of people saying that general rises in taxation is something they support, as opposed to staying within its current budget or cuts to other services or other measures or people uh, just don't know. That's not what is being re recommended in any case. It's a much more sensitive targeted changes to charges and taxes with a clear intergenerational focus um, where the better off older groups uh, will be asked to pay in various ways but protecting the worse off among those older groups. Partly because there's an increasing recognition that there's uh, an issue with to generational fairness, so at least in the sense that there's a, a severe challenge, in, challenge facing younger generations. So uh, when you ask this sort of question, when you reach your age, do you think your children or today's youth will have a higher or lower quality of life than you, or about the same? Only 20% of people now say that it's going to be higher. Um, over half of people say it's going to be worse. And that's a, a real reversal over the last few years of uh, greater optimism for youth, even in, in the early 2000s. It's partly down to the sheer weight of numbers. The baby boomers is a big uh, generation, but it's also to do with uh, their turnout, their propensity to vote. So our model turnout from 2010 is less than half of Generation Y voted, but 76% pre-war generation, over 70% of baby boomers voted. And when you work that through about proportions of votes cast, you can see baby boomers are over, worth more than twice as much as Generation Y in simple electoral terms. First, we have to recognise that connections are stronger up and down the generational hierarchy than they are across uh, generational hierarchies. Uh, we live in families. We don't tend to live in peer groups. So we worry about the impact on our families, um, which is uh, a concern about them, but it's also partly about whether it increases the burden on us. And secondly, on, on mindset, there is a really strong uh, focus on recognising contribution among this particular generation of younger people. Um, uh, the current generation has a particular emphasis on personal responsibility and then rewarding people that take that personal responsibility. It's a different sort of cultural change. And then finally, there's misperceptions, which include those sort of things flagged earlier that people just don't think they may need social care in later life. But there's still this very clear mental image of pensioner poverty among the general population. Getting a better, more honest, more specific conversation, which I think the report does, on how we're going to deal with this is a vital step forward. Thank you.